Do you know the differences between demons and principalities? Today, I'm going to be separating fact from fiction. You're having coffee with Conrad on... Conrad Rocks! Welcome, welcome, welcome to yet another edition of Coffee with Conrad. This is Conrad from ConradRocks.net. Rocks of revelation being poured out. My passion is for you, the listener of the Coffee with Conrad podcast at ConradRocks.net, to have a spiritual relationship with the biblical Jesus. One of these spiritual aspects of Christianity is the reality of demons and principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places. I realized over time that Christians were not making a distinction between principalities and demons, and we're going about spiritual warfare as if they were the same thing. This can be problematic, and we're going to dig into this today. We are having coffee with Conrad at ConradRocks.net. Do you <laughs> Now, the reason I did this podcast I was surprised to find that most Christians don't make a distinction between demons and principalities. Today we're going to be talking about this topic, demons and principalities, and why it's important to make a distinction between the two. On this podcast, we're going to explore the origins and beliefs surrounding these entities and how they're perceived and understood in Christianity. We'll also examine the implications of not understanding the difference in how it can affect spiritual warfare in our relationship with God. Buckle up. Now, the term demon, you're not really going to find that in the King James Bible, but it's often used interchangeably with devil, which is not entirely correct. And this problem, you know, begins with the King James rendering of the words which leads us to lump them all together. In Christianity, devils or fallen angels are considered low-level demonic beings, while principalities can be either good or bad, depending on their purpose in the spiritual order of things. The key difference between them lies in their power. Principalities have greater authority than demons and can influence larger groups of people than individual souls. Just as on earth, with presidents, generals, colonels, lieutenants, soldiers, in the spirit world, there's hierarchies between different types of entities, such as demons and principalities. Now, you probably recall that there's archangels, you know, Gabriel, Michael, Lucifer, and they are rulers over other angels. Remember that a third of the angels rebelled with Lucifer. Okay, he was prince over them. The word prince comes from principality. Think of how the archangel Michael battled it out with the prince of Persia. You'll find this in Daniel. This was an archangel fighting with a principality. The word prince is derived from the Latin word princeps, which means first or chief. The word principality is also derived from the same Latin root and refers to a territory ruled by a prince, or to the rank or office of a prince. Now, in this sense, a principality is a small sovereign state or territory ruled by a prince who is usually a member of a royal family or a member of nobility. The word principality can also be used more broadly to refer to any territory, region, or domain ruled by a leader or authority. Think of kingdom, domain of the king. Think of principalities like generals. God actually sets up and throws down principalities when he wants to. See Daniel 2.21. And also the people of God are to be subject to them even though they may not enjoy it. Read Romans 13 to verify that. Keep in mind, God even called Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, his servant, Jeremiah 27, 6, while the Israelites were forced to be subject to him. 
The prince of Persia was not defeated until the archangel Michael defeated him in the spirit world, and he was replaced with the prince of Greece. That would be Alexander the Great. See Daniel chapter 10. This came about at the time of Daniel's 21 day fast. Now, demons are underlings that do the bidding of the principalities. The word demon is derived from the Greek word daimon, if I'm pronouncing that right, which means deity or divine power. The word devil is derived from the Greek word diabolos, which means slander or accuser. Now, when Jesus tells his disciples that they can cast out devils in Mark 16, the Greek word for demon is used. Notice and think about it. Paul could cast out demons. We see that he cast out the python spirit in the lady that practiced divination, the Greek is python, in Acts 16. The disciples could cast out demons, remember that? But they did not bring down the principalities behind Nero or the Caesars, which God actually sets up. There's a difference between principalities which we wrestle with, we find that in Ephesians chapter 6 in high places, and the demons that we cast out in Mark 16. Now, the Bible makes a distinction between demons and principalities, although the precise nature of this distinction is not always clear. Here are some possible ways in which these terms can be distinguished. Hierarchy. Okay, think of the hierarchy. In some passages, demons and principalities are depicted as being part of a hierarchical structure, with demons being lower-level beings and principalities being the higher-level beings. For example, in Ephesians 6.12, Paul speaks of the rulers of the authorities, the cosmic powers of this present darkness, the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Now here, rulers and authorities may refer to principalities, while cosmic powers and spiritual forces of evil may refer to demons. Now let's think of the nature. Demons are often depicted as evil spirits or fallen angels who are associated with the worship of false gods and with the temptation and oppression of human beings. They're often depicted as being under the authority of Satan, the prince of demons, right, Beelzebub, and as carrying out his will on earth. Principalities, on the other hand, are often depicted as spiritual beings or forces that exercise some level of authority or control over a particular region or sphere of influence. They may be seen as either good or evil, depending on their relationship to God. Now let's think about the role. Demons are often associated with specific forms of evil or temptation, such as possession, illness, or insanity. They're depicted as being opposed to God and is seeking to lead human beings astray, personally. Principalities, on the other hand, may have a more general role in the spirit realm, such as serving as intermediaries between God and humanity, or exercising authority over a particular area or sphere of influence. Digging deeper, going higher, at conradrocks.net. Now I want to discuss the types of low-level demons that we find in the Bible. There's different types of demons mentioned in the Bible, and they're often associated with specific forms of evil or temptation. Some examples would include familiar spirits. Okay, these demons, this is written about in the Bible a few places. These demons were believed to be able to communicate with the spirits of the dead, and they were often consulted by people who wanted to know the future or to communicate with spirits of their ancestors. Think about psychics today, right? I was, I was fooled by the New Age for a long time until I realized, hey, they're actually talking to familiar spirits. And when I think of familiar spirits, I think of the word family, right? And this has to do with the spirits that are attached to a family, um, how God visits the iniquity of the children down to the third and fourth generation of those that hate him. Familiar spirits. They're mentioned in Leviticus 20, 27. And the lady with the spirit of divination, she could divine, that could be said to have been a familiar spirit in Acts chapter 16, the Python spirit. Another example would just simply be evil spirits. 
These demons are often depicted as causing various forms of trouble or disruption, such as possession, illness, insanity. Think of the gatherings, right? Evil spirits are mentioned throughout the Bible, okay, in Matthew 8, 16, where it says Jesus healed many that were sick. The King James Version uses devil, which is the Greek word demon. And in Mark 5, 2 through 13, this is the account of the gathering demoniac. Now, the King James Version uses the term unclean spirit. And in Acts 19, 13 through 16, this is the account of the seven sons of Sceva, and the word evil spirit is used there. And then there's the word devils, the English term devil, is often used to refer to demons in general, or to Satan in particular. So devils are depicted as being opposed to God and seeking to lead human beings astray. They're mentioned throughout the Bible, including Matthew 4, 1 through 11. This is where Jesus battles it out with the devil, Satan, after his 40-day fast. In Acts 10, 38, where Jesus heals all that were oppressed by the diabolos, or devil. And in Ephesians 6, 11, and 12, where Paul talks about standing against the wiles of the diabolos, or devil. And then he talks about the hierarchical powers of darkness. Now, in, I'm going to read Ephesians 6, 11, and 12, and then I'm going to show you some of the underlying Greek. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil, right? For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Now, in Ephesians 6.11, when he says to stand against the wiles of the devil, that is diabolos, right? Specifically Satan, false accuser, devil, slanderer. And when he says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, this is Arche, the chief, right? It's like, uh, you know, you heard of archangels, chief. And when he says powers, he's talking about Exosia, that's the Greek 1849. It's privilege, force, capacity, competency, freedom, mastery. And when he talks about rulers of the darkness, it's the Greek 2888, Cosmocrator. Man, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. But it's actually a world ruler, an epithet of Satan. Now, here's something interesting when he says, the rulers of the darkness of this world, you know, that's the English word, world. But in this instance, it's the Greek for eon, okay, Greek 165, for the same as properly an age by an extension of perpetuity. So it's a, it's a part of time. And when he talks about spiritual wickedness in high places, spiritual is often used uh, pneumatikos. So it's like breath, non-carnal, that is, ethereal a spirit. When I think of pneuma, I'm thinking of a pneumatic tool, like how God breathed into Adam and animated his body, right? Without the spirit, the body's dead. And when he talks about high places, the word high there is G2032 in the Greek. It's ipurenios. Forgive me if I'm pronouncing these Greeks wrong. I'm not a scholar. But it means above the sky, celestial and in heaven. Now I want to get into the origin of these low-level demons. This is, if you haven't heard this, this is a fascinating, very fascinating argument. It's called the Nephilim argument. You may have heard a little bit about it. The idea that demons are descendants of the Nephilim is a belief that appears in some ancient Jewish and Christian texts. Now, according to this belief, the Nephilim were a race of giant beings who were the offspring of angels and human women. Some texts such as the Book of Enoch, the Book of Jubilees, now these are not considered scripture, so be cautious, okay? These books claim that these beings were born as a result of angels taking human wives. These wives gave birth to Nephilim. 
It's believed by some that these Nephilim were considered to be demons, as they were not completely human, and they were not completely divine, right? Therefore, we see them as evil, hostile forces that are opposed to God. Remember in Genesis 6, this is why God destroyed the earth. A lot of people make the argument that Noah was perfect in his generations. In other words, he had no seed. He had no corrupted seed. When God's talking about, I will put enmity between thy seed and the seed of the woman, okay, this messianic seed has to be perfect all the way from Adam to the Messiah. And in Genesis chapter 6, we said that these Nephilim were corrupting the seed of man. Now, some of those who believe in the theory, of course, cite passages from the Bible as the one in Genesis 6 4 states. The sons of God saw that the daughters of humans were beautiful, and they married any one of them that they chose. I'm not sure what version that is when I copied and pasted it, but that's close to the King James. Some believe that the sons of God mentioned in this passage are angels, and the daughters of humans, the human women, they had a marriage, and this is what led to the creation of the Nephilim. Now, the belief that the Nephilim are offspring of angels and human women became disembodied spirits that turned into demons is an idea that appears in some Christian texts as well as in some modern-day belief systems. According to this belief, the Nephilim were seen as a race of giant beings. Remember uh, Goliath? You know, there were some other giants. Anyway, they were considered to be evil and hostile to God because of their mixed and divine human nature. It is believed by some that because they were not fully human and not fully divine, that they did not have a place in the afterlife and instead became disembodied spirits or demons. Now, this is intriguing to me because of the evil twisted nature of demons as opposed to the angels that I've read about in Scripture, okay? Demons, when you encounter them, they're very vile, okay? And when you think about that, think about the angels. And I guess it's possible that fallen angels lost their mind, so to speak, and became vile, and all of a sudden want to inhabit humans, but I don't really see that happening in Scripture. I don't see angels in Scripture saying, man, I really want to jump inside a human body, okay? And this is just me. I'm just putting it in out there so you can put it in your pipe and smoke it. But these are the types that can be cast out. And, you know, Jesus says that in Mark 16. Now, it's also interesting to me that the Nephilim, they want to inhabit a body, okay? I, like I said earlier, I don't find angels in Scripture getting all excited about wanting to inhabit human bodies, okay? It doesn't, I don't really see that in Scripture, um, because they already have their own body in their first estate. And Jude mentions this. In Jude 1 6, in the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness into the judgment of the great day. So when I think of that, you know, they left their first estate. They had children with women in Genesis chapter 6, and they're being reserved to judgment. Then Jesus talks about how these demons, they want to get inside bodies. And we see this in Matthew 12, 43 through 45, when the unclean spirit, notice he calls it an unclean spirit. He doesn't say it's an angel, right? When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest, and findeth none. No place for him to go, right? Then he saith, I will return into my house from which I came out. That's the man. See? And when he's come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. Then goeth he and taketh with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be to this wicked generation. So the jury's out for me on the actual origin of demons, uh, but the Nephilim idea is pretty fascinating, and I think it's worth more study. Hi, this is Jennifer Cotney with Christian Mix 106, and I'm having coffee with Conrad on conradrocks.net. Now, let's talk a little bit more about what are principalities. In the Bible, the term principalities, or principalities and powers, rulers, authorities, etc., 
is often used to refer to spiritual beings or forces that are associated with a particular sphere of influence or a particular level of authority in the spirit realm. These beings or forces are often depicted as exercising some degree of control over the world and its inhabitants, and they may be good or evil, you know, are they on God's side or Lucifer, right? In the New Testament, the Apostle Paul often speaks of principalities and powers in his letters, for example, in Ephesians 3, verse 10, to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. Now here Paul is speaking the way in which the church reveals the wisdom of God to the spiritual forces of the heavenly realm. Now in Colossians 1.16, Paul speaks of Jesus as the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation, for by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible whether thrones or dominions or principalities or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. So here Paul is saying that Jesus is the creator of all things, including the spiritual beings or forces known as principalities, powers, authorities, right? So principalities are often referred to in Scripture as the spiritual powers behind rulers and nations. There's one point where God is uh, speaking to the prince of Tyre, and then he's flat out speaking to the principality that rules him. Now it's a lengthy it's a lengthy chapter here, but the prophecy against the prince of Tyre is found in Ezekiel twenty eight, and you're going to see that God is saying, you know, Ezekiel prophesy against the prince of Tyre here. The word of the Lord comes to him, saying, "Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyre." He's talking to him. He says, Thus saith the Lord God, because thine heart's lifted up, now hast said, I am a God, I sit in this great seat of God, and in the midst of the seas, yet thou art a man, and not God, though thou set thine heart as the heart of God, behold, thou art wiser than Daniel. And if you continue on here, then after a, a few verses, he says in verse 11, Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, take up lamentation against the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum of full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Wow. So you're going to see here that, you know, principalities are, you know, these wicked principalities, these spiritual principalities, they're intertwined with the actual people on the earth. I mean, that's so fascinating. Now, I just want to. I want to highlight the fact that, you know, Jesus says we can cast out demons. The King James says devils in Mark 16, but it's the Greek word for demon. And then Paul talks about wrestling with principalities. So when we apply this to spiritual warfare, okay, we need to think about that. We don't cast out principalities because we're probably fighting God since he sets them up. Principalities and powers are spiritual beings or entities that have been established by God. We find that throughout Scripture, Romans 13. Okay, they're, they're there for a specific purpose. And they're operating within the boundaries set for them by God, right? Think about that. Therefore, trying to cast out a principality without clearly hearing from God is, I would call that dangerous, okay? Because it could involve opposing or challenging the will of God. Now, demons, you know, Jesus said, cast them out. Okay, but only God has the authority to remove or change the spiritual powers, like you know, huge principal powers, like uh, over cities and regions. I would I would check with God and get clear guidance before taking any action. This is why it's absolutely imperative to have a humble, a humble, unselfish relationship with the Holy Spirit, and be certain that we are being led by God to do those things. Conrad Rock Stitcher, iTunes, Spreaker, going global for Jesus. Now, in conclusion, I'm going to kind of highlight a few things I went over. Um, The Bible makes a distinction between demons and principalities. I went over that. Although the precise, you know, cutoff points, the nature of this distinction doesn't always seem to be clear. Okay, it takes time, wisdom, revelation. 
Okay. But some of the things, some of the ways that they may be distinguished one from the other is in the hierarchy. In some passages, demons and principalities are depicted as being part of a hierarchical structure. The demons are the lower level beings, and the principalities are the higher level beings, covering much more geography, regions, and ideologies. Now, for example, in Ephesians 6.12, Paul speaks of the rulers, the authorities, the cosmic powers over this present darkness, the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly places. Now, here the rulers and authorities may refer to principalities, while the cosmic powers and the spiritual forces of evil may refer to demons. Now, also consider the nature. Demons are often depicted as evil spirits or fallen angels. I was talking about the Nephilim, right? Who are associated with the worship of false gods, right? Normally, like if you look at some of the um, Hindu religions, the idols that they have, there's like demons inside them. <laughs> I've seen them. I mean, I, I know a little bit about how that works from the spiritual uh, spiritual aspect. They're depicted as being under the authority of Satan, the prince of demons, you know, Beelzebub, and they're carrying out his will on the earth. Principalities, on the other hand, are often depicted as spiritual beings or forces that exercise a a level of authority or control over a particular sphere of influence. And, you know, they can be good or evil, depending on their relationship with God. Lastly, we talked about the roles. Demons are often associated with specific forms of evil or temptation, such as possession, illness, or insanity. You know, you hear about the spirit of infirmity, right? Cast that spirit of infirmity out. They're also depicted as being opposed to God and is seeking to lead human beings astray. I'm pretty sure you probably experienced that yourself. Principalities, on the other hand, may have a more general role in the spirit realm, such as serving as intermediaries between God and humanity, or exercising authority over a particular area or sphere of influence. Now, principalities are higher ranking in the hierarchy of angels and demons, with the ability to control larger groups of entities than other types of evil spirits. These tend to be associated with specific geographic locations or nations. Okay, as they seek to establish their power and influence over those areas, principalities are able to manipulate people's perceptions by appearing as either good, you know, an angel of light. They can deceive you. They can appear as an angel of light. Right. In contrast, low level demons lack the same degree of power possessed by principalities. You know, if you want to get your mind blown, read read Ezekiel chapter 28 today and see how he's like talking to the Prince of Tyre. And then he's talking to the principality behind them. Now, if you want to pursue this further, I I got a book I'm going to recommend. I read it, I don't know, 20 years ago. It's called Needless Casualties of War by John Paul Jackson. I'm going to put my affiliate link in the show notes, okay? So it's a really good book. I recommend it. Uh, he talks about how some Christians, you know, they they took it upon themselves to battle some principalities without checking with God first. And he talks about the results. So without going into that, check it out. The link will be in the show notes. Very good book. If you're thinking about taking on a principality, it's better to be led by God. You know, that Daniel 21 day fast. I mean, that type of thing better to be checking with God than be a Christian cowboy and taking things into your own hands. You know, before I did this podcast, I did a a short Facebook post uh, to see what people thought. And there you'll see that some people like, wow, I didn't really know there was a difference between uh, devils or demons and principalities. So I'm going to include the link to that so you can get in on the conversation. Uh, That's going to rock. Check it out. The link will be in the show notes. And if this has touched you, please like and share this podcast with your friends and family. Thank you for being in my life. Until we meet again, dig deeper and go higher. Dig deeper, go higher at comraderocks.net.